Right, and actually, if you want to just pull up your slides, um, you should be able to share them too. All, all right, give me a second. Perfect. All right, and then how do I do the playback here? You should, yeah, you can just start there actually, yeah. All right. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. It's definitely uh, an honor to have Luis back actually uh, to present at BABP. Uh, in, in fact, um, I, I think I got introduced uh, to BABP presentations with one of the first uh, slides that I attended, in fact, a couple, few years ago, no, four or five years ago. Uh, and, and Luis has been um, coming back uh, with some phenomenal photography years. So I'm very happy that he really agreed to come back again. And each time it looks like a new set, a new country, in fact, and, and new photographs. So, Lou, uh, you have been here uh, in the Bay Area for about 20 years or so, but you said you're originally from Chile. So this, these photographs may be closer to your home than ours, but uh, definitely looking forward to this. And um, uh, one quick thing I just wanted to say before you start, Luis, is uh, just for the month of uh, March, we actually still have a phenomenal session actually coming up soon with Vivek going to present. Uh, and um, for the month of April, I actually have an idea I want to tell people. So I'm going to, if you have time at the end of the show today, I might just talk to you about that, or uh, I will send an email if we are really running late. Uh, but with that said, uh, Louis, I really don't want to take too much of your time. So please take it away. Thank you, Zwidar. Um I hope you can see well the, the screen. Yes. Uh, so yeah, the bird, the the, the uh, presentation is going to be about the trip that I made in the month of uh, October, end of October, uh, to uh, to the Pat Chilean Patagonia. Uh, everything started uh, with a conversation I had in June, July with uh, my buddy Marcus Bauman. Uh, we we were wondering what to do, uh, you know, in uh, at the end of the year and. Uh, uh, he suggested maybe we try Patagonia because that's what, one area he had explored. Uh, so we contacted a company, Albatross Burning Tours, who uh, he had worked with in the past, uh, and they organized a custom uh, trip for us. Um, it was six uh, full days, and it was at the end of, of October uh, last year. Um, so um, the, the photos that I took uh, are all with a, a Sony A1 uh, camera, a 600 millimeter lens with an extender, uh, mostly handheld. Uh, I'll tell why, why later. And, the, and uh, I used a, a black rabbit strap for, a, you know, just to keep it with me. Uh, so, uh, the, the, you know, when we were deciding the, the time of the year when to go there, um, we looked first, uh, you know, at target species, uh, what can we find there? We figured that um, uh, many of the species would uh, be arriving at the end of the year. Um, uh, they, they breed there, they, they spend the, the local winter up in, in warm latitudes. Um, so that kind of decided um, more or less, uh, you know, the, the, the time frame. We asked around and uh, it turned out that the, the best time was uh, around uh, October, early, early November. Um, uh, however, um, uh, it is also the windiest uh, time of the year around there. You, you can see the, 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 the wind map for, the, for, for that area. This is from, you know, for this week, it, it's actually uh, fairly, a bad over the year, but uh, you know October tends to be worse than than later in the year. Uh, so you know the you can see the the, the peak sometimes around uh, fifty miles per hour. Uh, we had probably you know close to seventy kilometers an hour sometimes, and you know the gusts in the, in the after, some afternoons close to the uh, Strait of Magellan. Um, so it, uh, it it was challenging, just to say the least. Um, so the, the trip, you know, it's a long trip, uh, you know, from the Bay Area. Actually, you have to hop in, in LA or some other hub uh, down to Santiago. Then it, uh, you know, continued to Punta Arenas, and uh, and this is more or less the itinerary that we did. 
So we started in Punta Arenas, went uh, up uh, direction uh, towards Opaine, explored uh, a couple of valleys there, then went, uh, went down to San Gregorio, uh, crossed uh, briefly to uh, Tierra del Fuego, and then came back uh, on the north side of the strait and then down to Punta Arenas again. Um, so, um, yeah, all this in the space of six days. So this is the view of the hotel the, the, the day that uh, we arrived. You can see the, the strait there, um, you know, just a city, uh, you know, a little bit of a harbor on the right side. And uh, so the, the first day was a Monday. We, we started uh, our, our itinerary. Um, it was a long drive. Uh, it, we first stopped uh, uh, to get uh, our target bird, the first target bird, the Magellanic Plover, uh, which is uh, fairly confined in range. Uh, was, uh, there were just a couple of spots where our guide uh, uh, knew where to find it. Um, and they gave us some, some nice opportunities, actually. Um, you know, first, uh, when we got there, um, it, it, there, there were two around and, uh, you know, we tried to approach them and eventually they, they, they took off. Uh, so I, I caught uh, this one in flight. Then later, uh, with uh, some patients, we managed to get some uh, shots of one, uh, you know, uh, walking on the water and then it, uh, it, uh, it stood at that, on that uh, little rock there. Um, and then uh, I just, uh, you know, like this, this shot, I just sat on the, on the shore and wait for one to, to fly in front. Unfortunately, yeah, this one took off and flew right uh, in front of me. So it, it gave me a few, a few shots. Um, fairly hard, you know, um, sometimes it's a little windy, so hard to, uh, to keep the land steady. Then we continued the trip um, and uh, it, was, Sebastian took us down to this uh, a ravine, a uh, small ravine where uh, we could find in the, a horn owl, uh, kind of a pretty cool bird. There, it took us. It took me a while to to find it. You can see how well it it camouflages with the with, with the surroundings. But eventually, you know, we found it. It was it, it kind of opened the eyes a few times. You know, they prefer to be in a tunnel. Uh, it gave us a few shots, and then once we were done, uh, we went uh, up to oh, sorry, to the a little bit further up where this uh, Cresta Caracara uh, was sitting on a post and uh, it was fairly windy and it would uh, take off into the wind. So just kind of waited for it to do it a couple of times and it gave me a couple of, uh, couple of passes there. It was, was pretty obliging. Um, and, and then when we were back at the, in the you know, back to the car, this little guy started walking to us and I had my 2X extender on it. So the best I could do was to get a kind of headshot of, of it, it's a scale through the earth creeper. Uh, I think it's a juvenile bird. You can see the, the gape, it's kind of orange. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think that indicates it's a, it's a young bird. Then we continued and uh, made it to a kind of a, a park of what looked to be like a a, 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 a retirement place or, or, or a club. Um, and it had quite a few of these birds that were fairly tame, like uh, this upland goose uh, male, it just uh, sat there, not, didn't go anywhere. I mean, compared to the other ones, the wild ones that we saw on the road, those would take off right away. This stood around, no problem. Then uh, I, I got a few shots of the Austro uh, blackbird. Um, a very also fairly fairly obliging it uh, it gave us a couple of shots um and then on the way back we heard this kingfisher um that had a right to the pond which they couldn't get a good background there so and as i switched to the to the to x extender to get to, you know to blur the background a little more the, the bird took off so i was able to get all this uh, this shot but this was on, on my bucket list uh, first time I, I take photos of this bird. Then we continued uh, our trip and went to Puerto Natales. Um, we arrived kind of uh, early, early afternoon. The, the sun was still fairly high up. 
So, but we still decided to take shots, you know, and see what, what we could uh, come away with. So there were, um, the, this one spot had lots, lots of uh, birds in the water. So you, you, we got the black necked swans and they were uh, swimming around. The Coscoro swan, there was a, a little flock that took off and it was one of the individuals. Uh, then uh, uh, the dolphin gull was a, a target bird. I couldn't get a, 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 an adult, uh, so it's kind of a first year bird, I think. Uh, doesn't have the full nice uh, plumage, but maybe next time. Uh, South American, South American turn, um, also first time I see it, uh, so I was happy to, to get uh, one landing uh, close. Uh, and then a brown hooded gull, which is fairly ubiquitous in, in southern Chile. I think every time I, I, I go there, and say, I see it. It's a beautiful gull. I like that um, red bill with a brown hood. And then, um, so it was the, the end of the day. Um, so next day, uh, I mean, that night uh, we stayed um, at, the, at the hostel. It was a very nice one. A lower hero is called, and um, yeah, I really recommend it to anybody who goes to that that area. The 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 food is pretty good actually. <laughs> they have a buffet, very nice. Um, so so from the Estancia, hotel Estancia El Lobo Hero, Patagonico, we went up to a place called Sierra Baguales, uh, which is a, a a valley flanked by by, by steep mountains. Um, it's uh, at a higher elevation than, than the rest of the area, so fairly high. So you find different birds up there. Um, so, you know, I grabbed this photo from the internet, didn't take one myself. But on the way, so you start from uh, kind of flatlands, uh, open, open space, um, and uh, you find uh, lesser rear. Uh, we found this one fairly shy, but eventually it, I mean, usually they move away, they run away, but this one, Kind of started moving and paddled it to the car, so we just gave it time and, and, and slowly got closer, and we got some some decent shot of it uh, from the car. Um, then uh, further up, we found a, a burning seraphinch, which is a high elevation bird, which you can actually find uh, uh, up in the, on, in, in the in the mountains uh, up from Santiago. So that's a fairly wide range. Uh, but it was my first time uh, getting a, a decent photo. Then uh, you can see there's all these um, nice uh, bushes that start, uh, you start finding as you get higher, you know, it's, uh, they have some nice shapes. Like I love this one, um, you, you know, with all the dark green and the, all the tips, uh, they make for a very nice purchase for the birds to stand on. Um, then uh, we ran into this sharp bill canastero that um, stood a couple of uh, seconds there on, on that uh, a little branch, but kind of a, gave a nice, uh, nice pose, uh, nice, uh, for a nice composition. And then uh, as we were, you know, looking for birds, we got out of the car, we saw this uh, uh, shark giant, uh, the great billy shark giant, uh, and, um, it was kind of hanging around and eventually Sebastian figured out that it was actually nesting uh, around there. So that's why it was sticking around trying not to go too far. So we just uh, waited a little bit, uh, got some shots and, and moved on, uh, moved on. But uh, this is an interesting bird because uh, it has this kind of a split range from what I understand. Uh, we have a, a range from the very south and also in the very north of Chile, um, close to the, the area with Peru, I think. Then uh, we went to a, a close to a farm and uh, you know found a bunch of this uh, long-tailed meadowlark, beautiful bird. Um, it's um, actually I, it reminds me so much of our western meadowlark, only and that it has red in front. Um, gave us some nice poses of, of bushes. Um, I even got managed to get uh, a, this one. If flying from from a, you know one bush to another, then um, this uh, rufous tail plant cutter came to check us out. Uh, okay, stood at a distance, so this is probably a, a big crop. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, not 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 uh, not my usual crop, but uh, I like the bird. I like those red eyes and the orange. It's kind of a nice, nice looking bird for me. Um, and then uh, Sebastian found this uh, uh, th this snipe, mentioned Lennox snipe. Um, it was uh, kind of sitting in the grass, uh, but we could only see it from kind of a small window in between the the bushes and the roadside. Um, so it stood there and, and gave us uh, quite a few shots. Do you notice lots of birds over there? They're uh, they called Magellanic or or Patagonian or something like that. Uh, you know, accordingly to the region. Uh, this is an alternate uh, ground tent which we found at a high elevation. Um, um, this you can also find here, you know, say, I've seen them near Santiago. And um, uh, usually, uh, I, uh, you know, I, all I do is just I, I lay down and wait for them to get closer to me. Sometimes I get lucky. This one gave me a, a, a pose. And this was also a, a target bird. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a very good shot. Um, it's a cinnamon belly ground giant. It, uh, there were, there were quite a few around on the road, uh, but uh, very hard to, to get shots off. They're very shy, couldn't find any anyone who would stick uh, around long. So I figured this one, or we figured that this one may have had a nest in, in, in those, uh, around those rocks. So I sat down and waited for it to get closer, but it just didn't want to. Uh, so it came only once and gave me that shot and I was it. And then this was another bird that we wanted to photograph. Um, you find, I think, uh, more on the Argentinian side, not not on the Chilean side uh, of, uh, of of the Andes. And uh, there were a few flocks uh, around uh, there, so I decided just to stalk one one flock that was feeding on the on the ground. I mean, just got on my belly and uh, went on my, you know, just dragged myself close to them, and they, eventually they. Uh, this one gave me, you know, they didn't really mind me and gave me a, 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 quite a few shots. So this one's the one I like the, the best. Then we ran into a, a, a Cordilleran canastero. I mean, a brown bird. Uh, I know people don't like brown birds so much sometimes, but yeah, this one gave, gave us a nice pose on top of, the, of this little bush. Um, then a, a scale throated dive creeper, this time in flight, and, and, you know, managed to, to get to the flight there. They fly fairly fast, but it was going into the wind, so it, uh, it slowed down a little bit. And, uh, and these guys, the southern lapwing, they're fairly common in Chile, and they're fairly aggressive. So if you get close or in that territory, um, they will chase you. And uh, this one was complaining. You know, it's moving around uh, with a, with the a, a, with a, its spear going around it, uh, and uh, a, fortunately, it um, a, the sun was uh, a, on top and, uh, and gave it some some nice uh, colors coloring on the on the wings. I have never seen them, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with this shot. Uh, the, also, a little later, you know, the sun was coming in and out, and here it came out, and then we got this uh, crested duck that was uh, flying around, going into a, a small pond, uh, not, far, not too far from the road. So um, that day ended, and uh, the next day uh, we went to Torres of Piney. Uh, so this is a shot uh, I took there. I don't know if that's, those are the main, uh, the, the 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 main tops there because uh, you know there were so many clouds that couldn't make up anything. Um, so the the trip was similar except that uh, the the route takes you um, to the west instead of going north um, after a while. Um, our target uh, uh, main target bird was uh, uh, the uh, the a Magellanic snipe, but. Uh, we first uh, found this uh, little southern lapwing uh, chick that was uh, in next near the road. Uh, I forgot if the parents were around there, but yeah, it gave us a couple of, of shots from the car. And then uh, we eventually managed to get the Australia, yeah, Australia, sorry. Uh, eventually managed to get it. Uh, it kind of stick, 
stuck the head out a little bit, uh, um, you know, didn't come out in, out in the open. Uh, but it gave us a, a, a few shots, uh, so we were fairly happy to to see it. I think it's a it's a hard to see bird uh, in the in the area, very much sought after. Uh, some portraits of uh, upland uh, geese that uh, we found they were super common in, uh, on the road, but getting interesting shots were was uh, complicated. Always uh, they would always fly away or. A, you know, have a bad backgrounds or something. So this one gave, gave some nice opportunities. Same with this, uh, with the mate. And then further up, uh, 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 we made a stop. Uh, it was actually, a, have, there was a drizzle, I think. It was a little, raining a little bit, uh, uh, but uh, we found this uh, fire-eyed uh, Yukon. Uh, which is, uh, I think I really like this bird. I had years ago with Marcos an opportunity to shoot, uh, to get shots up in near Santiago, but uh, uh, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't like, I wasn't prepared and I missed the shot. So this time, you know, it, uh, it, it, uh, it responded well and uh, gave us a few shots on the, on the, on the local vegetation. I just tried to get angles and, uh, you know, was able to. To, to get this, and I'm showing you. Then an also thrush, fairly common up there, like the, the wing stretch, I know the background's a little busy. And then uh, a tough to take tent, uh, also fairly common, I would say, but I, I like the, the branch you went on, uh, kind of a clean background. Um, you can see uh, maybe a, a couple of droplets uh, there, you know, was, again, it was raining. And this other guy actually followed us to a picnic area at um, the Crest of Caracara. It, uh, I think people um, just give them leftovers, uh, you know, uh, at the picnic table. So we thought we had something for, for it. So it came close, uh, you know, gave us a few poses and then uh, took off. But then a little bit after, uh, we saw this uh, Chilean flicker that went uh, into a burnt uh, area. And um, uh, we just carefully uh, got closer and closer and managed to get a couple of, of, of shots of it on, on this uh, branch with a little bit of, uh, uh, of uh, burnt portions. And now a little break from birds. Um, when you go to Torre de Supine, um, I mean, a lot of people go there to 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 see uh, the mountain lions, and uh, we were super lucky that we found this one. Um, uh, there were three of them uh, on the on the roadside, and um, uh, there were there was there were a bunch of people there waiting, and uh, we um, decided to to see what what happened. Right, uh, so it was uh, they were taking a nap for the for the out uh, away from the road. Um, usually the, the roads are public property, but uh, if you step out of the road, that's private property. So you, we couldn't go and get shots. Uh, usually people who get these uh, mountain lion uh, images, uh, they go out on a tour that go into private property. So we were kind of limited. We didn't hire that tour. Uh, but uh, so we went away, uh, hoping that they would be there a little later. And sure enough, we came back later and they were just next to the road. So like this is a cup, I, th I think uh, close to a year old, I think. Um, and and uh, this is the, the mom um, picking, picking out from behind the bush. bush. And uh, this is uh, mom later kind of uh, taking care of, of the cup, uh, kind of licking the face that was all red with, with blood because it had been eating a, a Wanako kill, um, a, a, you know, few, a, kind of uh, an hour earlier. And uh, here you can see mom with one of the cups and you can see the, the red face. And uh, yeah, also we saw armadillo on the roadside. Kind of, it was kind of uh, nice, a, a, a big hairy armadillo is called. And uh, on the last day we found a, a South American a skunk uh, also on the, on, on the roadside, we're looking for birds. And that's it for the break.
now back to Bert. Uh, so um, continuing uh, on, on the, the, the fourth day, we headed uh, east to uh, the San Gregorio area. Um, and uh, uh, we basically the road that we, that we took uh, goes along the, the, the border with Argentina. Uh, but always flanked by a little, what they call estancias, you know, all these uh, big ship uh, farms that they have there. Um, and you can see, you know, this is what you usually see. You see a fence on the on the side and, and, and the birds, uh, maybe like that uh, cinnamon belly, uh, cinnamon, I mean, chocolate vented flag guy, I mean, tyrant um, is sitting on the, on the, on the fence post. Uh, but we found one that, uh, just uh, you know, was in the roadside, so we we you would lined up the car with the, with it and tolerated us, and it got a few shots, and uh, we got the shots, and then later uh, we even got it uh, in flight, you know, flying around us, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so this is um, a shot of it banking um, in front in front of uh, in front of us. Um, and then later um, we kept going. Um, it can be kind of barren for a while, but then you find like groups of birds. Uh, like there was this area that had uh, lots of bird activity. I don't know if it's because uh, you know they, they had been shipped there, so there was uh, a lot of uh, kind of uh, animal poop around. I don't know if it was cow or sheep or something. And then you know bugs come in, and then the birds follow the bugs. Uh, so. Um, the white bridal finch uh, was another target, another target bird uh, local from that area. And um, uh, yeah, we got a few shots, uh, including this one, which I really like, uh, of it standing on the grass. There's not much else to stand on, actually, a few bushes and, uh, and grass. Um, then later, we uh, ran into, in the same area, into this two banded plover that uh, you can see it here running around. And then later it gave us some, some flight shots. Um, uh, you can see this one showing the an upper view and, and, uh, and the front of view. Then later uh, we saw this um, two foot chest daughter actually, it was letting us get very close, kind of close to us. Um, so we uh, went on the ground, got a few shots, uh, you know, kind of eye level. Uh, and um, and then uh, you know kept going and moving around and so on and then we figured out why there was a little chick there, <laughs> so we we figured that we figured that it was time to just uh, uh, move along, just uh, go back to the car, just not to bother the bird more, you know. So we left them we left them alone, and then we kept uh, going on the on the road. You know, you see birds; they're very shy. You know, many of them, like this one. Uh, at least this night, this male, it was on the roadside and uh, he didn't really want to go up uh, and, uh, you know, post for us. So yeah, I, I showed the shot kind of semi-hidden. semi, semi -hidden. And then our last uh, bird of the day was uh, this Patagonian Mockingbird. I, it, it, there was barely any light. So this, this shot has a little bit of a, of a motion blur, uh, but I kind of like it in flight. And then later uh, singing on it, on, on, on a little bush. Actually, it, um, it was interesting because uh, the, the song was so similar compared to the, the Northern Mockingbird. Uh, you know, sometimes compare all these uh, songs of different birds. Yeah, this one was, was strangling. It, it had parts very similar to it. So then um, the next day we started in uh, Tiro del Fuego. In, in, um, I mean, you probably heard uh, Tiro del Fuego has his uh, uh, penguin colonies, and uh, so um, and there was a, there's a king penguin colony there. Uh, we we considered going there, but um, the problem is that it opens super late, like at at, uh, at noon. So if the day if the day is is clear, like it was uh, uh, on the day that we uh, you know we started in Tiro del Fuego. Uh, then it wasn't wasn't worth going because it was going to be like uh, overhead light, not uh, not cool for photos. So we we skipped that that part of the trip and just hang out hang around uh, uh, near the near the strait. So 
we started in Cerro Sombrero, and then uh, in the morning we were fairly productive. Um, you know, before getting to the strait, before crossing the strait, um, and then went uh, went uh, out to San Gregorio and stay stay there. Um, so in the morning, uh, we we started with the current data pipette. Um, looks uh, similar. I mean, it behaves very similar to our pipettes here. Uh, the way they wag the tail, it's very 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 similar. And the, this one it was a species that I. Uh, I, I really wanted to have for years because you can also, also find them further north, so it's kind of quite a wide range. Um, and this is a nice shot on the grass. Um, then later we found uh, another of our target species, the ruddy headed goose, which is, I think, endangered. Uh, yeah. um, and uh, it, we found them on the, on the roadside. Um, then the, it flew out into, into an open area and, and gave us a, a couple of shots. I, I like the speculum there. It has that, that, that green color. I really like um, So got a couple of distant shots and, and, and then cropped a little bit to, you know, and these are the, the final shots. Then uh, we ran into Magellanic Oyster catchers. Actually, they're fairly common. Um, but And they have this uh, behavior that uh, when they, they want to you to get out of there, they they they, they bring the tail up uh, like that, they cock the tail, and then uh, you know they move around the, uh, hoping that you leave. I don't know if they're trying to become bigger or something, but uh, yeah, I find it funny. Then we saw another brown bird, the common miner, uh, you know, one of the many miners you find in Chile. Um, uh, then the roadside, uh, we found a, a female, at least uh, since night, and this one was more obliging than, than the male that we saw the day, the day earlier. And then we crossed the, the strait and started shooting from the other side, but then the, 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 the weather was super bad. So, you know, very, very cloudy, rainy at times. So we just took what we could. Uh, um, and uh, you know there were these cormorants flying uh, in, in front of us um, towards uh, the the docks. Um, so this is a Magellanic cormorant, like the the, the, the red face. And uh, when this is sunny, also they have uh, some nice iridescence. And then uh, we uh, our, our our guide uh, uh, detected this uh, Patagonian uh, tinamou. Uh, which most of the time was hiding behind bushes is what I showed here. Uh, but we we decided to chase it, uh, you know, follow it in the car, by car, because uh, uh, he told us, you know, if you start walking to it, uh, it will just leave. No, we're not, we're, you're not going to get any shots. Uh, so eventually we, we managed to get it out in the, in the open uh, while it was moving from one hiding place to another. So that uh, it was kind of a, a nice uh, opportunity. Um, then later we arrived to a pond with many uh, ducks and uh, and birds. So this one in particular, uh, it was flying around. We realized later that uh, yeah, they, it had chicks around, so we also moved away. Um, and then uh, there were Chilean flamingos. Um, there were there were like three or four. And at some point uh, they took off and they and they flew into the wind, they kind of in front of us. So gave us a couple of shots. And this is a each side of a of a pair, um, and I think this is this was the end of the day. Um, and then on the on the last day, um, we started early, uh, very close to the crossing again, in the strait, and um, and started heading uh, south uh, west towards Punta Arenas and uh, this place called Puerto del Hambre. Um, just following the coastline, it was uh, afternoon, so. We had the sun uh, on our backs, uh, you know, uh, at times. So when we started uh, driving, we got out of the car at some point because we had seen this uh, Pomado Falcon. And then uh, uh, as we moved around, it started to follow us and actually dive bomb us, uh, you know, what's going after us. Kind of got me a little bit worried. And then I, I got a little bit separated from my friend Marcos and he started attacking him. So this is a shot of, of the Falcon going after him. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Um, then the other birds down the road, uh, a Patagonian yellow finch. Um, it's the only yellow finch you can find there, as far as I understand, uh, and it's uh, a driver compared to other yellow finches you find further further north. Is uh, the same one on a, on a different uh, a, on a perch. Um, we also found uh, a, at the same place, a uh, Austral canastero, um, which is also local from, from the area. You know, hard, to, hard to photograph for us. Uh, we had been trying to get shots for two days, and uh, eventually this one gave us some, some nice poses, always from, from the car, using the car as a blind. And then um, also, it this was also a bird that was always running away from us. And eventually uh, from the car, it, uh, you know, we got some, some more or less decent shots. It's a crop um, uh, of the Tony Thode Dotterel, but it's uh, another beautiful uh, plover that you can find there. So what, uh, and this trip, uh, one of my main targets was to get plovers, so really like, uh, like that, that family of, of birds. Um, and there were well, there were so many that uh, that go breed there, you know. That uh, yeah, it was a nice opportunity. Another bird uh, which is fairly common actually throughout uh, Central and South America, uh, only that this one is it's a different subspecies. Um, uh, has old gray head, uh, or the nape is gray. Um, so it's a, the rufous color sparrow. They're all a little different. I forgot there's like six or so subspecies. A Patagonian Sierra Finch that post on that uh, little bush give give uh, give me nice uh, framing from there. Um, and then we started heading um, uh, south, you know, um, hit the hit the road, uh, um, and then yeah, the, the sun came out uh, in, in some areas, and uh, we could not choose a light so we just got some shots of uh, birds and harsh light so this is an imperial comrade that we hadn't seen before uh it has ni nice colors on the face but otherwise uh, it looks uh, really brown i think and this is uh, the comrade the magellanic comrade again that i mentioned earlier uh, you can see it has some more iridescence uh, uh, to it so there's an overhead uh, it shot from it took which we took from a pier and then we uh, it, it ran into this uh, flying steamer duck um, that uh, we had seen uh, a few years ago up um, uh, further north with, uh, with Marcos, uh, but this was a nice opportunity to get one in the area. And then you can compare it with the uh, flightless steamer duck that we, steamer duck, which we, we found uh, a little later. Uh, so this one uh, uh, has, it uh, doesn't really have the ability to fly. You can, you can, if you see the, 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 the wings, usually the, the feathers are all uh, messed up. Uh, they don't really have fly, flying feathers. Mm. Um, uh, so this one just swung away uh, a little after. Then we uh, headed, headed into the forest area. And uh, uh, there we found the Austral Parakeet that gave us a couple of shots. This is a, the best one I could uh, I could choose for you. And uh, then we went back to the coast and found another ruddy-headed goose. Uh, this one took off again, in, in, in this time in the right direction uh, when we got out of the car, and um, and uh, yeah, it gave us some some nice uh, flight opportunities. And uh, same with the upland goose that was. Uh, flying into, into the wind, taking off. Unfortunately, this one had some pretty messed up uh, feathers on the, on the left wing. It's kind of, I like the pose, even though, you know, despite the feathers there. Uh, Magellanic also catcher again, fairly common. Uh, first time with that one, let us uh, get close and, uh, you know, for, for a nice, uh, nice evening shot with nice light. Um, we, you can also find the southern giant petrels that uh, the fly around the, 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 the strain. So this one just uh, showed up at the very last uh, minute, you know, kind of a last, uh, last light. And uh, I wanted to show also the bird's uh, subpiper, which, uh, you know, it's a, it's a long flyer to the one that one breeds in, in, uh, in Alaska. 
and spends the the the, the winter in the in the warm areas in South America. So I, I I was impressed to see this bird so far so far south so 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 distance from its uh, uh, breeding grounds. And um, and then yeah, uh, the next morning kind of uh, on uh, over time we got a couple shots uh, before going to the airport. Got the red carpet cut uh, uh, on a, in a marsh, uh, and then uh, we went to a little park, and there were lots of swallows flying. We got this um, kind of backlit shot, not the best of a Chilean swallow. And uh, to conclude, uh, we, uh, I uh, got this shot of a, a, a Chiloe, I, I'm missing a no there, Chiloe region. Which I wanted to show because I found it curious that it, the, the the back feathers are all like black and white monochrome. There's no real real colors there. And um, this is uh, the last of the birds I went to show. Now a few behind the scenes shots, uh, you know, of us uh, uh, either stalking birds or you know waiting for them to to do something. Uh, um, here we're, on the left side, we're uh, waiting for the uh, the rail to to show up. Uh, then uh, we're on the bottom right. I think we were photographing the doctor and um, you know the one that turned out to have uh, some some chicks uh, around or one chick. Um, here you can see a little bit of the landscapes uh, that that we find around there. Left that must have been around photos of Biden. On the right side, this is uh, we were shooting the uh, the Patagonian Sierra Finch, I think, and uh, yeah. And then the last one is uh, us in bad light trying to shoot comrades or something. And um, and this is um, the end of my presentation. Thanks for watching. Wow, thank you, Luis. Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, I don't know if, in, uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to um, ask now or use the chat chat box. And uh, I'll get I'll get it started. Uh, at least you know, and then people are starting to get into the mood of asking questions here. Um, this seemed just like a fantastic trip. So yeah, it it was it was we we really loved it. Yeah, it uh, it was more than than uh, what I expected uh, from 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 you know the area and everything. We really enjoyed it. So, how much of uh, how much of preparation did you have to do before the? Uh, just, uh, I mean, zeroing in on the dates was a uh, was a challenge. Uh, originally, we started considering December, and then we started doing more and more research. I went uh, on each, you know, for each of the target species. I, I went on the uh, uh, Birds of North America uh, website from Cornell Labs, and uh, you know, looked at their file and uh, what the migration patterns were, you know, when, when did they arrive, uh, uh, when they start having chicks and so on. Wow. Um, so, and everything pointed to, you know, more or less uh, uh, end of uh, end of October, begin, beginning of, uh, of November. And I think probably even the third week of October would, would work well mm. uh, from what I saw because some of the birds already had chicks. Okay. Okay, well, that's that's the time frame you should be. And you said that's also a windy month. It's windy air. Um, oh, I mean, okay. uh, uh, oh, in that area, I'm told you can have four seasons in one day, particularly in Torres and Pine. You know, we we even had snow there, right? Uh, um, at least the high elevations there were, it snowed uh, on on that day. Uh, we we had sun, we had uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, so just uh, if you go, you know, just uh, bring warm clothes. Um, uh, um, you know, I, I probably my, my my beanie never left my head. Um, mm. uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it, it can be challenging. Um, yeah, but you, you can always uh, find birds. I mean, birds are, are very hardy there. Uh, uh, maybe in the afternoons it's going to be in some areas it's going to be uh, very slow, but in the mm. mornings it's uh, usually the, the, the wind is calm. And uh, you can get your shots. It's, uh, but you need a guide, nice. though, right? I think people. Who I, I I would hire a guide, and actually, yeah. I recommend uh, Sebastian very much. Um, okay. He knows really the area. Yeah, and he 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 lives in, in Punta Arenas. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. 
So Paul here is asking a question that I was actually had written down to ask myself, but I think so. Um, so he's asking lots of great flying shots with great focus. Uh, any advice? Uh, practice, I guess. Yeah. And uh, actually, and now it's a little bit of like cheating with, you know, with the new cameras. Uh, if you have a, a Nikon Z9 or a Sony A1 or, or even the 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 Canon uh, R5 or the R1 or 3, they're all, I mean, R1 is not out yet, R3, they're all excellent cameras. So they, they can grab the focus and, and, and keep on locked on the bird uh, so much easier than in the, you know, a few years back when we had SLR cameras. Now this this is a, this is a game changer, you know, oh, really? with, a, with, okay. with new cameras. Yeah, yeah. and the, the difference I would say, you know, between the higher end and the lower end is just, uh, uh, you know, the circuitry, um, how fast it records the images, and the, whether or not you get a distortion on the image because of a fast uh, of motion of the of the of the wings or something. But uh, otherwise, um, yeah, the, the 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 focusing is so much better now. So the rest now now it's on you to um, to stay on the bird, you know, while while it's flying. Mm. And you said you're using the Sony A1, so you use the bird tracking mode in that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. And and what about shutter speed? Because I think that's why I think he's looking for more details as well. Uh, yeah, shutter speed. Um, it depends on the species. For the small mm. birds, I use one for thousands of a second. So mm. uh, for these small birds in, in bad light, I had to uh, sacrifice ISO. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Topaz was my friend cleaning up the images later. <laughs> and, and so typically for the Sony systems, looks like you can go bump up ISO quite a bit. Uh, with all these new cameras, you can. I yeah. Think, uh, yeah, it should be an, an issue. Again, the, the, for for slower birds, uh, you know, one over twenty five hundred, thirty two hundred mm -hmm. is, is a minimum for medium sized birds. For ducks, for instance, four thousand, I feel I feel more comfortable. That I'm not going to get a blur. I see. But uh, but it happens, you know. I had it with a couple of birds that uh, uh, I forgot the settings, you know, and I shot with slower settings. And sometimes you get lucky and you get one shot that, that's that's <laughs> sharp. But in general, you can you can tell that uh, you messed up, you know. <laughs> And not just great flying shots there, Louis. The, the the backgrounds also are so beautiful, creamy. So you know how much of uh, how much of an extra effort was that? Uh, well, it's the optics. Um, Eight hundred and forty millimeters uh, in general gets you creamier backgrounds than mm. say four hundred or or, or five hundred. Uh, that's why I always have uh, the extender on. And even when I when I'm using, uh, let's say, I have also the Sony two hundred to six hundred. I, I prefer to add the, the extender just to blur the backgrounds a little more. Oh, I see. Okay. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. And no tripod, you said, huh? Not, I had it, uh, but I, I mean, I used it a couple of times and, and then I, I, I figured uh, it, it got in the way. You know, I, I couldn't move as freely, you know, uh, mm. if I had to stalk the bird, uh, go, go down on the ground and so on. It was too, too much hassle. So, I think I only used it for the mountain lions because I was shooting with very slow shutter speed there, and, yeah. and uh, you know the the weather was bad. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I barely barely took it out. Wow, handheld, it's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah, again, I, I think it's just practice, and, and and the new the new cameras and lenses are so lightweight that it makes everything uh, you know easier, more possible than than years ago. True. Uh, just wondering, uh, any other questions for Luis? I think. Very nice to see your pictures of the cats as well. What a lucky thing to get to see. Thanks. Yeah, cats and yeah, birds right. in the same show. I did not realize that. <laughs> yeah, the cats uh, were a bonus. Uh, we we thought you know we hope to get lucky there because again we didn't hire the extension uh to go there but um, you know we mm. we really wanted to focus on birds and on, on this trip uh but if we got lucky we didn't mind and yeah yeah it, it we're super lucky so this is a known female um i think it's the, the name's petaka i think uh, and the two cubs are kind of famous around the, the area 
Interesting. Did you see any Andean condors? Uh, no, I know that you can find them there, but since we had photographed them uh, near Santiago, we decided to skip them. So just in favor of other birds that we that we had on the bucket list. Yeah, fab fabulous photos, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm just curious, it's a six day birding trip and the trip seems to be long. So you had other things going on or you think, you know, just, just planning a six or seven day trip is, is good? Uh, no, six, seven days, I think it was good to get all the target species. Um, mm. I think we got some even on the, on the last uh, day. Uh, we we visit so many in different uh, places, habitats. You know, in some place, some birds are only found in some in one location. So I think it's it's worthwhile doing six birds, and then if you want to do cats, uh, you know, add a few extra days there, because yeah, the cats are also iffy. You know, even though they have trackers all all around them, um, you know, sometimes they they may not be in the best location. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. A any other comments or questions? Okay, um, Louis, do you mind if I take over the uh, presentation and if you stop sh stop sharing? Go, go ahead. I don't know how to. Oh, I, I think you there. just say stop sharing. That's it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, for the moment, I lost my my pointer. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. There you there go. You go. Yeah, so since, I mean, just a few minutes, if you people don't mind, um, I think we have really another um, a couple of great speakers coming up. In March, we have Vivek. Uh, and then in May, we actually have Jerry Ting, who's going to come and present. So that would be really nice. Um, and for April, I was really hoping we can do a sl something different. Uh, from the Bring Your Photo session, I got some just absolutely marvelous feedback uh, that people were very excited. They really liked it. They wanted it more than once, and so I'm thinking, you know, that will be an, that will be a spot which I can reserve for doing uh, bring your own photos, but with a slight twist. Maybe we say take photographs in February and March, and then uh, and hopefully, if you can, and this is something that I'm really seeking advice and and help here, uh, do it as a pair. Could we do as uh, two or three people, whatever it is, friends in the in the uh, the Bay Area Bird Photographer Group. Uh, go out together and take take a door shoot, for example, and come and share the photos. Um, are people up for that? Do you think that's a good idea? I, I think I want some more connections. We've been on these Zoom calls for several years now, and I feel it's you know it's high time we actually do something together in person. Any advice or any uh, feedback on that? Think people want to think about this. Maybe we can try it, try it uh, once. Yeah, it'll be a virtual format. Uh, we'll still do uh, the bird show like we did in in um, September. You know, people submit ten photographs and we'll we'll go to the show that way. But the photos that we want to see in in April should be taken in February and March of this year. So anywhere, it's, it could be a backyard, it could be you know, in any travel you did or something like that, or any place in the Bay Area too, no matter. Okay, Steve says appearing up may be difficult. I, I get it, completely agree. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. In, in, you know, if, you just want to do it alone. That's that's fair game. But um, do you think it's okay to do it in the months of February and March? And April, April, I think it'll be very early in the month to uh, won't have too many days there. Just to kick up a notch in, in terms of not just showing the photographs last year or the years before, but maybe we can have a theme or 
it doesn't have to be a theme. It could just be birds in the Bay Area in April and you know in February and March or something like that. Yeah, it's springtime, and uh, I think we'll we'll have a election. So so please uh, please yeah think about this. I'll send out an email uh, with this, and then uh, are people open for the uh, the bring your own photos at least? I think that that should still be pretty exciting. Because the, the last one we had, actually, even the years before when we had that, that seemed to pretty big hit. Okay, um, I'll send out an email and then um, hopefully, you know, we'll have a lot more volunteers there. With that, um, Luis, thank you for, for coming and sharing your photos and advice. Uh, I'm sure people will be reaching out if they have some plans to Patagonia. I, I definitely want to reach out to and, and ask you a little more questions about the planning. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you, Sweden, for the invitation. And, and if anybody wants to get uh, some information, just shoot me an email. Well, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.